So, this past weekend, I have been watching um, one of my favourite series from season one called Reacher. I'm sure most of you are aware of it. It's also based on the books. Season two recently dropped three episodes and then a new one episode every Friday. I kind of hate that model. I prefer either you drop them one episode per week until the end of the season, until the season ends, or you just drop the whole season like Netflix. I hate this, like, let me give you free and then let me drip feed you after. It's fucking annoying. But regardless, Amazon got to do what they got to do to keep the numbers there and engagement and shit. But Jack Reacher is so good, man. Reacher, sorry, on Amazon. It's so fucking good. And people have described it as dad TV, but I would call it lad TV. It's so, so, so basic it's just a big hulking dude who's really just right and goes after people who do wrong to others and protects his friends that's basically it and people who can't protect themselves the you know the helpless and said whatever it may be like it starts off amazing episode one he basically um saves some woman that's been carjacked like it's so fucking basic him, him, obviously, you know, um, police work, detective work, being very attuned to like reading people and whatnot. He doesn't, he's a man of, you know, few words as well. But I just love the idea that it's so basic in that it's just a big hulking dude who goes around kicking ass and protecting people and stuff and standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so far, season two, I've liked. Um, I was a bit nervous when it started. I thought they were going to try and do the whole like, it's not about Reacher, it's about his team or it's about the women involved. You know when they try and spin things and try and be like, it's women empowerment. It's like, look, the empowerment side of things is that he's just a big hulking dude who's not a creep, right? He's not an abuser, he's not a bully. Um, you know, the, the only toxic masculinity trait of him is that he clearly doesn't, you know, he's a bit of a loner. He avoids any kind of personal connections and basically prefers to just stay on his own. And it's kind of um, sad, I think, in the beginning when it first starts off um, because it kind of, you know reminded me a little bit of me and my tendencies to kind of push people away and kind of stay on my own and not be social and not have a group a good big group social a group sorry i can't even say it i'm fucking not used to it <laughs> it reminded me of myself because he doesn't really have any close connections he purposely pushes people away he lives off the grid no phone no nothing he basically lives via the charity of others to, you know um, hitchhiking rides sleeping on couches and shit on park benches and just kind of you know lives the life of a nomad and um when he gets the distress signal from one of his colleagues in the show um it's quite funny how they do it they kind of send him the distress signal via a little um via uh bank deposit drops on his um account so i think it's like 1060 or something right one of those codes that you do in the army um so then he realizes something's wrong and he calls the number that he knows off by heart and he picks up and you know and, and basically he has a catch-up with the girl that he kind of works with that he's kind of really cool with and she basically tells him all this stuff about their team because they used to be in an army team together right these special investigators who are basically i think army police investigators of some sort and um you know they went on a lot of missions whatever it may be and she basically updates him and says yeah this person's dead this person's married this person this like and he missed out on so much and he's basically like oh why didn't you call me and she basically makes a good point she's like yeah well all these things that happen people life moves on and i couldn't and i couldn't like reach out to you because these weren't emergencies. Somebody getting married is an emergency. Um, maybe even a funeral isn't really an emergency either. Do you know what I mean? Like the person's passed away already. It's like, it is what it is kind of thing. So um, it was kind of a realization for him that even though he's important and he played an important role in everybody's life and he feels like these people are his brothers and sisters, their lives go on. They don't stop just to kind of wait for him to come back because he disappears so often. And it kind of reminded me of myself and that, you know, I remember when I first got, when I first jumped on Instagram, I, I remember that was a realization of like how little communication I had with people and how bad I'd been in terms of keeping up friendships, especially from the first kind of big social group I had, which was the group I went with out to fucking New York with um, the guys from Better Never Than Late and stuff and people that used to hang around from that kind of crew. And I remember when I first jumped on Instagram, I remember that was the first realization because I think Facebook was when we were kind of in university and then Instagram was when we all kind of got our first jobs and stuff, right? So it was kind of like, our adulthood was Instagram and I remember logging onto Instagram and seeing all my all those friends that I kind of knew from the from before you know had like new girlfriends they'd moved they'd moved to like new places maybe in some moved to other countries they'd hadn't they'd gotten dogs one of them passed away it's like Jesus I was like fucking no I missed out on so much and no matter 
how much I wanted to reach out and rekindle stuff. It just wasn't going to be the same again. And then I remember another time it kind of broke my heart was when I logged onto my Instagram and I saw those same people meeting up for drinks and stuff, right? And hanging out and shit. Like, and I was like, fuck. And this was maybe, I don't know, five, 10 years ago. And I didn't get invited. And I was like, at first it kind of hurt. But then I thought to myself, they didn't invite me because they've invited me to other things in the past. And I've always said no, or I've not turned up. So there's only so many invites you can give to somebody and they keep turning you down or they keep ghosting you or they keep flaking before you're like you know what let's not just, let's not count on him so i couldn't take that person i couldn't take it too personally because i already had sort of like given them a hint of what i was on what time i was on whatever so it kind of is what it is but i kind of identified a lot with that with them um, reacher in this um series I, i'll be honest but i think so far from the, from the three episodes in it shows that i don't know i think you we're getting the feeling that this is one of those ones where he's going to maybe realize that he needs company. Sometimes being alone all the time isn't good. And he's going to maybe find a balance between being a lone wolf and also being with his family and friends and so, or, so, or being with his friends and maybe his love interest. Because I've got a feeling, most likely, again, spoiler alert if you're not watching anything, but I've got a feeling either Jack Reacher ends up dying or the lady that he's involved with ends up passing away, or the other lady, that's the tech person, whatever, that he's really close with. I've got a feeling some, some, one of those three will die. That'll be like a pivotal part of the whole thing. And then it obviously set up season three. But the main guy in it is an absolute unit. What's his name? I forgot the actor's name, but the actor's name that plays Reacher is perfect casting, man. Because I remember when, um, what was it? What's his name here? Let's see if I can find a name. Bear with me a second as I get the cast up on here. Okay. I remember when Tom Cruise did it, they said Tom Cruise was a bad um, casting because he's so short. But the main guy that plays Reacher in it, his name is Alan Richardson. So Alan Richardson, Rickson. He's so good. He's a perfect cast for fucking Reacher in this movie, for this series, because he's, I think, like six, seven or something. And he's built like a brick shit house. It's absolutely crazy how fucking jacked he is in this. And, you know, it's all natural, of course, right? Um, Just some white rice, <coughs> um, you know, bowl chicken and broccoli, you know, nothing else there at all. Zero. Just a, just big white and fucking jacked. Look at him. Look at the size of this guy, bro. Look at this. Look at the absolute size of him. Absolutely massive. You can't even lie about that. Do you know what I mean? That guy is a fucking unit. And he's six seven or something. Like, that's a fucking unit. Look at him. Absolutely huge. But yeah, big up Reacher. If you haven't watched it already, please check it out on Amazon Prime Video and stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing.